Hey everybody, welcome back to into another edition of Rapid Recap here at Inside Nebraska. With me as always is Tim Verghese, I'm Zach Carpenter, and uh, coming to you Memorial Stadium after uh, Nebraska's fifth spring practice. And before we get going here, just encourage you guys to quickly like this video, subscribe to the Inside Nebraska YouTube channel, where you can get all of our practice footage, all our press conferences, and our uh, analysis videos, just like this one, drop directly into your feed. So Tim, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, man, I'm a little tired. I'm very tired. I'm exhausted. Had a had a tiring week. And don't have much juice. I'm trying to create some juice, create some <laughs> energy right now by being overly enthusiastic. And it's just perfect today because that's exactly what Nebraska is trying to do on their offense. And that's the, that was the theme of the day in my mind. Uh, the biggest takeaway from a press conference today with Marcus Satterfield, Glenn Thomas, and the three quarterbacks was main goal. One main goal, other than keep keeping. Uh, uh, taking care of the ball, not turning it over. The main goal for this offense is creating some more explosive plays and throwing the ball, especially downfield. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, all three quarterbacks kind of touched on it. You know, both offensive coordinators, I guess, you know, co-offensive coordinators <laughs> now yeah. uh, kind of touched on it as well. Um, and, you know, like they said, you know, creating explosive comes in different ways for this program, but, uh, you know, they've got the, they, they, they believe they've got the quarterback talent in there to, you know, really throw the ball around downfield and uh, you know I think they have got the receivers as well to do so. Yeah yeah it's it's funny that you slip, slipped a little bit you said both offense coordinators but it's funny because that's kind of what it is yeah and uh, you weren't here in um, in December when and January when uh, Glenn Thomas was hired and we're asking Matt Rule like what's the um, I mean gave co-offensive coordinator title to Glenn Thomas so what's sort of the dynamic there and uh, that was something that they sort of touched on um, today Marcus Satterfield did especially like the dynamic between him and Glenn Thomas was great. They hit the ground running. They've worked together before. So it is a cohesive um, operation right now in that in the offensive meeting rooms as they design the um, d build on the design and the structure of this offense now that uh, you have a full time quarterbacks coach and you got quarterback talent like uh, Dylan Rayola um, and, and Heinrich Harburg, Daniel Kalin. Um, the, Heinrich Harburg, one of the things they're working on him with is mechanics, footwork, uh, getting that elbow up. Um, Dylan Rayola, uh, some of the same things, but uh, with, with, with Rayola, the biggest takeaway in my mind was, again, you have this offense who is wanting to create more explosive plays and throw the ball downfield, and you have a quarterback who was asked, uh, what, what's one thing you think uh, you've been doing really well so far in practice? He said, I think creating explosive plays has been one of the, the areas I've been doing pretty well in. So that's a good yeah, sign. Yeah, very good sign. And, uh, you know, you go back and watch Dylan's high school tape, which, of course, you know, everyone has at this point <laughs> multiple times. Um, we go back and watch his tape, you know, there's, there's 50, 60 yard throws on there pretty consistently, even dating back to his sophomore year of high school. Uh, you know, this is a guy that can really, you know, like, you know, you've got receivers now like Jalen Lloyd and Malachi Coleman that can take the top off of defenses. And you've got a receiver or a quarterback now, you know, that could actually do that and get the ball to them, you know, 50, 60 yards downfield. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you watch this highlight tape, man. Like, I know I've said that. I think I've said the story on multiple platforms like eight times now. But um, it was a Thursday before, um, on a on a Monday in December, a week before National Signing Day, is when he, the rumbling started coming out that he was uh, interested in Nebraska again. They wanted to take an official visit, and the the Huskers were back in the ball game. Thursday, so a few days before that. It was when he released the senior year highlight tapes at Buford. It was 17 minutes and like 30 some seconds of highlight tapes. I'm just watching the highlights, just cackling. He's unlo he's unloading 60 yard bombs downfield off one foot, like running, escaping pressure, evading pressure, and throwing them on on a dime. Um, so you get that explosive, like just straight up fun element that you're going to have to this offense. But um, when when Dylan was asked, like, does that does creating explosive plays, does that always have to mean like a, a deep ball downfield throw he's like and he just like no no not at all like um a lot of it's just getting our the ball to our playmakers uh, getting the ball to guys in space because he said we have some juice on the edges i know the the quote we have some juice on the edges really got people going yep yep and uh, you know it says a lot about just kind of the receivers they've, they've got right now you know um you know like the, the guys we've already mentioned malachi coleman Jalen lloyd even some of the tight ends uh Thomas Fedoni, Carter Nelson coming in the summer, uh, Demetrius Bell, we'll touch on later in this video, but, but those are guys that can create after the catch. Uh, even some of the recruits they brought in, Ja'Cory Barney, some of these guys, something they didn't necessarily have across the offense last year that they now feel like they have is, 
is something that, you know, a, a guy that, you know, can create, or guys that can create after the catch, and, you know, that also ties into, you know, the RPO comments we heard today. Yeah, it, it, you, you got to uh, remember, because it's easy to forget, um, the, the rash, the epidemic of injuries all across this roster last year, but especially the receiver room. I mean, you had Isaiah Garcia Castaneda go down. Uh, well, you had, uh, you had um, uh, who's the receiver? I'm blanking now. Omaha receiver uh, Xavier, Xavier Betts. Bet, bet, Xavier Betts, Betts leave the program just b- only three weeks before the season. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, he tears his ACL. He's out for the year. Marcus Washington misses half the year. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Billy Kemp gets hurt, misses a couple games. So, you got to make sure stay healthy, but I mean, it's football, so yep. injuries are going to happen. You're, so you want to develop depth. You want That's, I think, one reason they brought in a uh, heavy receiver class over the last two recruiting cycles as the children are here. The children are here to, to witness our, uh, <laughs> our video right now. Um, I'm glad we have an audience. But, uh, I mean, honestly, children, young. This receiver core is very young. You have like five freshmen in there, four or five, uh, I think like six freshmen or redshirt freshmen yep. in there right now. Demetrius Bell's one of them, who's a redshirt freshman. He's a redshirt freshman who, his stock has been trending up. He's been going up and up this, this entire off season, but especially this last week, I mean, coming into spring ball, we made a top 10, top 14 Huskers to watch um, this spring and had him at number four. And so far, that that ranking has uh, has proven to be a good one because earlier this week, Mal- or last week, Malcolm Hartzog uh, listed Demetrius Bell as one wide receiver who's been really challenging to guard in practice. And uh, today, both Dylan Rayola and Heinrich Harburg mentioned Bell as like he's a guy who's been standing out and they're mm-hmm. building a lot of chemistry with. Mm-hmm. For sure, and he's a guy that you know even even out in the hallway. Uh, that was a guy that was mentioned by Thomas Fedoni. Uh, I believe one at least one of the coaches that spoke today yeah, talked about him yeah. as well. Um, you know, and you go back and watch. We didn't really see Bell last year all that much. He kind of had to set out a year. He's been activated this year, and they've talked about you know how much of a difference that's made uh, to the offense just having him active out there with the guys. Uh, you go back and watch his high school tape. Um, you know, this is a guy that uh, plays bigger than his frame. You know, the first like minute and a half or so of his of his senior tape is just him mossing guys you know inside the 10 yard line you know it's like at the goal line things like that he's a guy who's going to go up and get it um which is big you know that that that's huge for for these quarterbacks you know um they've got these taller receivers you know like the jamal banks and the isaiah neors and the the, the, you know malachi coleman's that can like have those bigger frames to go up and get it but when you can trust that you know you can throw to the little slot guy like demetrius bell and he's going to like put in the effort to go get the ball means a lot, you know, and, and, and not not to discredit Billy Kemp necessarily, but Billy yeah. Kemp was a little more limited just because of his frame. And so I think what you're going to see out of Bell is a guy that can contribute, you know, all across the offense. And, uh, you know, that's that's going to be there at all three levels, you know, uh, deep throws, short throws, middle throw, like all of that. He's, he's, he's going to be there. Yeah, I think Billy Kemp was a possession slot receiver. He, mm-hmm. he had some slipperiness to him, but he's more possession guy, not – not quite as explosive, especially laterally. I mean, vertically too, but laterally. And I think you get some of that with with a guy like Bell, um, who's like you said, has flashed that on tape. Mm-hmm. I remember Jay Foreman and Steve Marek doing a black shirt breakdown of him, and Jay just Jay just starts like uncontrolled, like accidentally lets out a laugh, like like almost a cackle, like this guy's just making plays right now. Like th- this is a big time get. Is that's what this Nebraska staff um, back in August of 2023 before the season they're talking uh, privately like we we love this kid we hope we can keep him and they have kept him um, and he's a guy who's, again stock rising this entire receiver core like uh, top to bottom I think you see the diversity of of skill sets and size I mean like you said Banks and there the big body guy and Malachi Coleman the big body guys then you have Jalen Lloyd Jaden Doss Demetrius Bell as slot guys who um, who can provide some explosiveness from the inside so I think it's a good just overall meshing of, uh, of receiver talent to go with guys who can actually get them uh, the ball. You hope can get them the ball in those in those spots. Um, yeah, and even with those with those big guys, you know, you've got like we, we talked about, you know, like uh, Neor and Coleman who can kind of take the top off defense, while Banks is more of like a reliable, you know, down to down. He's going to move the chains for you. He's going to be that reliable type guy, but he's never going to be like this home run threat or, you know, like, you know, break a defense. Um, at, the, at the same time, you know, with, with the, some of the slot guys, Jaden Doss and, and Bell are, are thicker, like they're bigger, you know, Corey Barney and Jalen Lloyd, mm-hmm. smaller, skinnier guys, uh, you know, are going to stretch the field for you. 
Uh, but, you know, you wonder how they're going to hold up, you know, against contact, especially, you know, with routes across the middle. You don't really worry about that with Jaden Dawson and Demetrius Bell. Yeah, I think that was one of the things with Bell is uh, he, he needed to add size. He was 157 pounds coming in. Now he's up to, like, I, I think, think they said 192. 192, was, 192 at, at, last, yeah. at, at one point last year. Um, but, yeah, the Jalen the Jalen Lloyd piece, I mean, that's another who Rayla said he's building a strong connection with. You start envisioning long, <laughs> vertical, explosive pass plays downfield um, with some of those, with, with the arm talent that, that Dylan has. But uh, I think that's, we're going to get out of here now. I think we're just going to wrap it up with a quick video. Um, we do have on Saturday, Matt Rule is going to be talking. I think they might be scrimmaging. I mean, that sort, that sort of would match up with the timeline of last spring. Uh, would be to have a scrimmage after um, the second week or during at the end of the second week of spring practice. So, I mean, we're gonna have a lot of a lot of things I think to digest from that. From what Rule said, I mean, last spring and last spring game, it was ball security that they were talking about, and then the spring game they had uh, I think eight fumbles and two interceptions, six lost fumbles, two interceptions, um, which wound up being a predictor of the future. So <laughs> we're going to be hoping we don't hear about that on uh, on Saturday when Matt Rule talks and breaks things down for us. Uh, again, encourage you guys to like this video, subscribe to the Inside Nebraska YouTube channel, and go to InsideNebraska.com. Tim's our recruiting analyst. He's already got a ton of uh, recruiting updates. He's got some more coming tonight off some uh, important Nebraska visitors who uh, either just were on campus, are on campus, or will be on campus. And then he's going to be going down to Kansas City um, seven on seven event. Yep, seven on seven event. Going to have about sixty teams out there in Kansas. So going to see some of the best talent in the Midwest this week. There we go. So again, keep it locked in to Inside Nebraska YouTube channel and, and InsideNebraska.com for all your latest on the Huskers. So for Tim Vergisi, I'm Zach Carpenter. We'll catch you guys again next time.